God and try to show enthusiastically the various locations. Um, I think it's a good start, but I think we should use more as we usually have. Let me wrap them up there. Um, so without further ado, I'm proud to present the financial year 2020 budget summary for the Lincoln Library. You got the clicker? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay uh, so looking at our organizational chart, it's uh, essentially the same as last year, except um, Jeff is no longer under the fiscal officer. Um, so pretty much above the line is administration. Everything below the line um, directly, um, directly uh, services our, our folks front facing. Uh, with the exception of our technical services managers catalog and checking the books, which is still part and parcel of getting um, materials out to folks. Um, so pretty much the same, except with the exception of uh, now security reports to me, so I've, I've gotten a bit of a promotion. Um, in addition, with uh, the next slide here, uh, looking at our workforce, um, last year we requested 40, this year is the same. The change from 40 to 41 reflects the change of uh, the fiscal officer now reporting to Office of Budget Management. Um, something I've noted on this slide that we're particularly import, uh, impressed with or proud of is uh, instead of, uh, for our minorities, it was at 12% last year, it's now at 19%, and we want it to be reflective of the community we serve. I think we're getting closer there. We have a little bit ways to go, but we're getting closer to the numbers that we really want to see because it is important for folks to see, especially in a public service job, um, everyone um, represented. And so the, the next numbers here are from fiscal year 18, so a little bit behind. It's always a year behind when we're looking at the IFLAR. Um, I, I'm a big fan of basketball, so I like to call this the box score of libraries, to put it another way. It's kind of the statistics all matched up here. Um, and so just to go through looking and comparing our numbers from last year, um, in fiscal year 2017, our visits are up about 7,000, a little bit more than that. So we've actually had more folks coming to library than ever. Um, more than 800, more like between 800 and 850 folks we average every single day coming to your library. Um, our circulation of materials is down 390 total, so pretty much uh, exactly the same. Uh, where we have seen other libraries have a bit of a dip, we've really held pretty much stagnant. It's statistically um, insignificant. Um, and surprising to me, the circulation of our electronic materials is the area where we've actually seen the decrease from 17 to 18. It was about 73,000, um, and then it dipped to 68,000. Um, I have checked the numbers this year so far, and we've actually seen it go higher than, um, we're projecting it to be higher than the previous fiscal year as well. Um, part and parcel with those e-cards that we've been using, uh, we've seen those numbers sig significantly go up. And so if you look at the total circulation of uh, 457,225, a really quick way to get uh, a good idea of what value for that is for the community, the return on investment, um, roughly every item, uh, we didn't break down which exact ones, but roughly every item is about $16. That's the average kind of book price, uh, price of the, what we purchase. And so that's about $7.3 million returned to the community which is pretty good, not considering all the different programs, services, other things we offer. That's just looking at items coming in and out, and there's so much more that we do, um, and it's, it's really impressive, I think. And so looking at the next slide here, this is really funding comparisons. We are the lowest uh, funded per capita, so this is done on a per capita basis. We have, for every citizen of Springfield, we uh, fund our library $37.77, uh, cents, excuse me, uh, and that's uh, down from last year of 38.02. Um, and so the Decatur Public Library is the closest to us with 47.67, just to give you a bit of an idea of this. And most libraries have uh, kind of went up a little bit. There have been a few other ones that have went down. But as a whole, if you average it out, it's gone up just a little bit. Um, but if you look at how much we spend for every dollar Lincoln Library spends, Decatur spends about a dollar and a quarter. And then for every dollar that the Lincoln Library spends, Champaign spends about $2.45. And so we really are great stewards of your money. Uh, we do a great job trying to serve the public, and we do so very leanly. Um, and we really, really are trying to be as efficient as possible. And so looking at the, the next slide, it's capita per FTE. The other way that I really look at this, uh, can you just, can you? Um, we're really looking at how many number of individuals, uh, I kind of call it classroom size, how many number of one library employees serve this many numbers in the community. So for every director or um, Security guard, librarian, um, library assistant, there's 3,062 individuals that they serve. Um, so we are, again, very leanly, uh, we have a very lean workforce. Uh, Decatur Public Library uh, has about, for every three people we hire, they hire about four, and they're the closest one. Uh, and then, so if you look at Urbana Library, for every one person we employ, they employ about three people per capita. So What is FTE? FTE, full-time employee equivalent. So, um, yes, yeah, thank you, good question. And so again, we are very leanly. We do a really good job in making sure that you get every single ounce out of uh, every one of our employees. And that's a really testament to them because they do a great job and do it with a smile as well. 
And so taking a look at our uh, financial 2020 budget, um, your, uh, we can pop back one. Thank you. I think it's gotten rid of this one. Um, looking at these numbers here, uh, we're about of an increase of 0.14%. If you look about two years ago, we're actually down about 3,000 because I do believe we cut the budget uh, $9,000 last year. So it's a very small, uh, modest increase this year. Um, and so the largest thing that we've actually increased is our EDP processing, our electronic data processing, and most notably for our equipment. Uh, for the library roughly has 130 computers, and 75, per, uh, 75 of them are over uh, six years old. So they're out of their warranty right now. And so we really need to be aggressive in catching up with that because they're, it's a, an aging fleet. I believe one even uh, warranty expired in 2007. So it's a, doing some double duty. It's really uh, outlived its lifespan about three times. Um, and next year, we're going to see a significant number, especially in our, some of our computer labs, expire as well. So we really need to be aggressive in correcting uh, what has been kind of a neglected area. Uh, two years ago, it was 20000 30000 and now we're looking at $65,000 for that, just to keep up and to make sure that we do not fall behind, because technology is more and more important than ever for libraries, and a really a focus of ours. And so looking kind of at the pie breakdown of uh, operations versus personnel, we spend roughly a third of our budget on operations. That's keeping the lights on, heat in the building, computers, books on the shelves, all those different things. And then roughly two thirds on our personnel. And really the greatest asset of the library and the greatest value is, is the folks that run it. They really do make the library. Otherwise it would just be an empty building uh, with computers and books and it's really the heart of the library. And um, that's a great testament to our employees. They do a wonderful, wonderful job. And so there are two um, things I wanted to make sure to address, two one-time asks we're looking for from this year. Um, so we're looking for $125,000 this year uh, for a one-time cost for our EDP, electronic data processing. And we're really looking to uh, replace the technological backbone, the infrastructure of the library. Uh, what we're looking at in particular is um, the, uh, the switches of the library are all about 20 years old. Um, just to give you, I'm, I'm 34 years old. I was in high school when uh, these were installed. I was just getting into high school. Uh, so I was almost in middle school, depending on that year, what you're looking at. So these have really, they've done their due, their due diligence. They've done their job. Um, and so really what we're looking at is these have been, a couple of them have been shutting down over us over the past couple of years. And this is something that's going to continue to happen. Um, to look at replacing all of them, since again, we do have 130 plus computers. That's a lot of uh, internet connections. Um, we're um, looking at about $80,000 to replace them and working with uh, John West from over there. And if those were not replaced, um, we could have uh, some significant outages. We wouldn't have the internet at our facility, um, meaning we couldn't really check in and out books because it is cloud-based what we're working with there in terms of Cersei Dynex. Um, we wouldn't be able to offer our computer services, Wi-Fi, um, a number of different other things. Our website would be down because that we, we need the internet for that as well to provide it to our folks. So it would be a significant interruption of library services. And I think more notably to me, what's, uh, what the other amount we're looking for is for servers. Uh, those servers are about uh, from, some of them are from 2003. Um, and so those actually were surplused over from ISD at that point. They were already past their useful life. Um, and we've kept them for about 10 years. They're an uh, operating system 2003, and we're unable to upgrade them. And if we were to lose one of these servers, it's not if, it's when. I would say probably over the past, I mean, it could be tomorrow, but it could be within about three years. But I would say just a guess that about between one and three years, we're looking at um, some catastrophic failure of these. And some of them would be, we would just lose our security cameras until we were to replace them. We would need to replace them, obviously, at that point anyways. Um, we might lose uh, some of the photographs that we've scanned, years and years of photographs we've scanned from uh, SVC, Sangamon Valley Collection. Um, if our website server crashes, we may lose our complete website and no longer be able to offer any digital services as well. So that would be about, um, about a fourth of our materials being no longer available. And so it's a pretty significant catastrophic thing that would happen to our library, a huge reduction of services, um, things that can keep me up at night. Um, and so really, it's more efficient to do it one time, long term. Um, in, instead of getting a roof, I kind of compare it to fixing a roof, instead of getting a patchwork done, it's better just to do it all in one shot because then it costs more. It's kind of penny wise and pound foolish to do it as it goes because you can get a better deal if you buy more at the same time. And additionally, it will uh, not make it so we have to go and do all this work around and it's all of a sudden a crisis. Instead, you're addressing up front and being smart and intelligent about it. So it's really a strategic way, a one-time cost to fix a long-standing neglected issue. And with the increase of EDP money, uh, as you see what we did before, that should fix this on a long-term long standing basis. There'll be a replacement schedule. 
And then the other item of note would be our bookmobile. Um, we're really looking to actually add a bookmobile to our services. Um, we really think this will be great in reducing barriers to service. Um, we are the only library in Illinois with over 100,000 population without um, multiple branches. Peoria has, um, excuse me, not Peoria, Joliet has two. Uh, other, all of the other libraries, uh, excuse me, communities with over 100,000 folks have three or more. Elgin has three. Peoria, um, about the same size of us, has five. Rockford has five. And so we really have a significantly less um, branches and less uh, resources for than many other communities our size. Um, Bloomington has a bookmobile as well. I think they're about, what, 80,000 folks as well. And so really we're looking to kind of reach an, those underserved populations that aren't able to come to the library. It can be a, a large problem for folks to get downtown if they're not able to come to it. A lot of folks, are, some of the biggest issues is parking. They would not like to come downtown. Um, uh, and also they're really missing the community branch feel. feel uh, uh, and so we're really looking to kind of address this to some degree with a bookmobile. It really is a... Um, a great agile way that we can address it since if we had we're getting another location it would be in one spot where this can actually be driven all over town and we can go and pick multiple spots and be really agile with how we approach our library services and again it really gets at what we're trying to do with not just the library being a building but rather a concept throughout the whole community and really being a presence and that's why you see us at so many more outreaches and we could bring this to the outreaches we could have more um, more uh, collaborations um, we could have more programming, and there's really the, the possibilities are, are, are really infinite with this. And that's why it's a really great creative solution to be able to, um, to help get our folks those resources they so richly need and deserve. Um, and additionally, I think we would get more value out of our current resources as well. We'd have more checkouts on our items um, because it would deliver those items to us. People could put them on hold, and we would deliver those items to there. And really, we've been working on this for about a year developing this and really looking at what would be the most appropriate. We're looking at uh, a sprinter, um, which is about, uh, um, about a, somewhere around $150,000 to $175,000. Um, we actually already have a $25,000 commitment from our foundation to be able to put in for this, so that would reduce that by this amount too. Um, in addition, our van is getting long, one of our, one of our vans is getting quite long in the tooth. Uh, it's going to be, need to be replaced in approximately two to three years, and that's why you see our auto costs are up and I would say that we would see that going forward as well because um, with aging vehicles comes um, more repairs and at some point there would be a cost benefit ratio that wouldn't work for that. So that would be about thirty to $35,000 we would need to budget for anyways. And so we worked with Leadership Springfield seeing if folks would like this and then we uh, had a survey and about 57%, a majority of Springfield residents would utilize mobile services if available. Um, and really, so it's an efficient, in summary, it's an efficient way to leverage our already resources we already have, offer more services, and the best part is it's no additional staff are needed. We've been able to have our existing staff, which I'll go through here in a little bit, um, being able to kind of fill this during times when we do have that, that little bit extra staff in the afternoons, where the night and the day staff are kind of there at the same time. And it's a one-time cost for over a 10 to 20 year, in talking to about three other libraries, it's about 10 to 20 years that we will get service out of, with the average being about 15, 14 years. Uh, again, a low-risk, high-reward way to kind of um, replace some part of the branches. And it's not just a thing that delivers books. We're looking at it emitting Wi-Fi, possibly even having a couple of computers for use there as well. And it's a really great way that we can develop a number of partnerships. And so kind of looking at the, the next slides here, I have three slides that kind of uh, break down program budgets. So instead of looking at the library as a whole, OBM has asked us to do a program budget, which looks at just a, one program, one aspect of the library, what you're getting, um, kind of I'll describe what you're getting for what the costs are. So those are those next three slides, kind of I'm, I'm the guinea pig. I get the honor of showing you uh, this, this style here. So I'm, I'm hoping to do, uh, do it justice. And so when we're looking at the bookmobile program budget, I did put the three staff from Extension Services who are right now doing a very important job. And, and also they would be able to serve those folks better by having a better selection um, of items for the, uh, on the bookmobile. Instead of bringing the van, they would have a full, essentially, branch to bring in two high-rises, senior homes, things like that. So these are already employed by the library doing Extension Services work. And so you can see uh, there are no new staff required for this. Um, and there is the one-time cost of the bookmobile for approximately 150,000. Again, we're looking at, you know, with the foundation chipping in the 25,000 there, we're looking at, again, the city paying about 150,000 for a great service. And we anticipate about $8,000 of extra vehicle costs per year with just more gas. We will be using it more, just, and that's a rough estimation from talking to three, four other libraries we've worked with. 
Looking at the next slide, we've asked to kind of break down some other ones. So the Sangamon Valley Collection, and basically their function, if you're not already aware, Sangamon Valley Collection is um, our local history. So they're preserving documents and resources, making them accessible to the public, both digitally and in person. Um, they also help with genealogy. We have Ancestry.com in our library. People come in all the time. We kind of help people discover their family, which is pretty awesome. And something they don't get enough credit for, which they really work hard on, is that, which we may not even see, is they are actually capturing what's happening present day for future generations to look at. So they're really working on how they can capture digital things, uh, digital images, things like that, because more photos are being taken than ever. But since print is such a stable medium, we're seeing so many, um, so many pictures going by the wayside. So we're actually developing ways that we're actually uh, capturing today as well. So if you think either today or our past is important, uh, Sangamon Valley Collection is important to us as well. Two full-time staff and then fairly uh, low non-personnel costs for about $187,000 total for that valuable, valuable service in preserving our local history. And last but not least, look in our youth services department. Um, I, I bet you, you could probably guess what these folks do. They help serve the youth of our community through books, computers, um, you know, uh, programming, a number of different things as well here. So um, they really do a great job programming. They do story times. I actually like to call them literacy lessons, but no one knows what those means because they really work hard in those to actually start building the uh, building blocks of language, writing, um, speaking, things like that. And they're really our community's first teachers, the first stranger that you don't person you're not aware of, uh, other than your parents really or guardian. Um, who really is teaching you something. So it's a really important function because we see more and more folks in our community. I hear from folks serving younger folks and saying them in success. Folks are not kindergarten ready when they're coming to kindergarten. So we're really trying to address that as well. Um, and so there's four uh, full-time employees in that area. Uh, typically, just to let you know, which mirrors our other numbers from the previous slide, a department like this, I asked around, we're looking about eight to 12 individuals, uh, full-time employee equivalents. Uh, so I'm not sure how they do it. I'm very impressed, so I will give them a, a big kudos here right now. And then you guessed it for non-personnel expenses. Uh, the biggest one is books, believe it or not. Uh, $76,000 for that, total about a $404,000 investment in the youth of our community. And uh, I also wanted to give the summer reading program a shout out. During the school, uh, uh, during uh, when the school is out of session, we actually really take uh, the lead on being the educational and kind of cultural center for the youth in our community, among a number of other places. Well, and before you go to the accomplishments, sure. you've got a long, impressive list of accomplishments, but will you go back to slide seven, the, the budget slide? Yes, sir. <clears throat> what does your uh, slide show for uh, EDP uh, 2020 request? Mine shows 24,000 of an increase. It's, uh, my financial year request is 20 uh, for 2020. The third one over is uh, 85,000. Okay, I think you're actually on the blue sheets and the three ring binders, it's actually um, 210,000. I believe that reflects the additional request of the 125,000 request from uh, slide number nine. I believe that's coming out of a different fund that was previously Right, so I just confused by that when you went mm -hmm. through that. So yep. that slide really should be updated then to sure. be 210,000. So, sure. okay, I just was confused by that. Thanks a lot. Yeah, no problem, of course. Um, and so looking at our accomplishments, it's my favorite time. I could go through, uh, I could take hours on this, and you're welcome for me not doing that, uh, because otherwise you would not approve my budget, you'd be very sad with me. And so uh, one of the things we're really proud of is the completion and implementation of our strategic plan, really making sure the library's pulling all in the same direction, doing all the same things. And we're seeing the dividends of that, and we're also being more transparent in showing the community what really our goals and objectives are. And so that's something we're really, really proud of, and we're happy to report in March we're going to be doing a summary of that and really showing our community all the different goals we've hit. We're not going to hit every single goal and objective we set out to do, but we're beginning a number of them, and we're really proud of what we've been able to do. Um, we add, as uh, uh, Chris offered earlier, we add the addition of book drops throughout our community, so a great collaboration with County Market, a number of other places we've collaborated with. Um, that's another area I think we can continue to do more in. Um, in during the summer, we went to the YMCA's uh, west side of the Terrasotes. I think I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, we actually went there for the summer and enrolled a number of their summer campers there. Um, a lot of them came from low-income uh, areas, so we really were trying hard to um, get out to that community as well. Um, and we've done a number of other things. Another thing else that we're really proud of is we've worked on getting services, not just for unsheltered individuals, but with kind of a focus on that, um, in terms of getting partnering with SIU Med and Memorial to have an individual come to the library and offer some of their services. A Memorial's offering PATH, they come on a weekly basis, 
And um, it's really been successful in our, in our mind, and it's really been a great way that we're able to offer um, them the help they, that they, they need. Um, and so it's nice because it's a kind of a neutral area instead of going to a big administrative building, a place people feel comfortable going to. We've also created an exhaustive resource list. Libraries are very good at um, getting and compiling information, believe it or not. So what we've done is we've, made, uh, we've taken all the information out there from all the resources throughout the community, put it in one easy to read, easy to understand document, and it's been very, very successful. Um, and a lot, number of other organizations have asked us um, for it as well so they could put it at their facility. If you haven't been in the library in the past year and a half, it looks a lot different. If you haven't been in the library in the past three months, four months, it still looks a lot different because we've actually added um, some color and modernized it a little bit to make it more approachable, a little bit less administrative. So if you haven't been a little bit, please come on down. I'd love to show you. I'd be happy to give anyone a tour. Um, and so one, one other thing that we're really uh, proud of is we've actually had a 5% increase in our cardholders. Um, and that's just our organic growth, not considering our e-cards as well. With our e-cards, we probably had about an 85% increase um, of, of, in growth from that. But that's because we've added an additional service. In just pure numbers of folks without e-cards, we're looking at about a five, we're on track for about a 5% growth this year. And so we're really proud of that. That's an outstanding number. Um, is working at a number of different libraries, I've never seen growth that large. And there's more, but I won't go through those as well because, again, I know I'm taking up a lot of time. One other thing that um, I, uh, I really wanted to make sure I touch on is we've actually received a grant from the Illinois State Library for Project Next Generation. And what we're doing with that is we're partnering with um, um, We Are Enough. Uh, it's, it's an organization, um, and it's a bunch of middle school girls who a lot of times about half of them are housing at risk and half aren't. And it's kind of an underserved population in the fact that a lot of times you don't get to hear from them in our community. So we're working on uh, doing something called the No Show, K-N-O-W Show, where we're working on them to be able to have them work on soft skills in terms of storytelling. And so, and we're also working on digital skills. We've actually gotten Adobe Premiere and a number of laptops, so they're able to go create uh, those storytelling uh, stories on there, present it to the community so you can hear their voices, and they can also develop those technical skills. So it's really a great marriage of those two things kind of put together in terms of those soft skills of storytelling, which is important, and then those te technical skills as well. And so we're incredibly excited about that opportunity going forward. And then looking forward to 2020, some of the things we'd like to do is really, uh, the biggest thing I think that's important for us is getting out in the community more and developing collaborations uh, with the community. I think it's really important that we're out in the community, not just a building, but rather someone who gets out in the community and a part of the community. And we've tried really, really hard to get outside our four walls, so to speak. Um, and, and you know, I think we've, we've had over 70 outreach events this, this year, which is incredible. Um, I, I just, I can't say enough about that. And the partnerships we've formed this year, the things we've done, I'm just really excited about that. And I think there's a lot more where we've there that we can uh, develop as well. In addition, we're really looking at uh, focusing on the bookmobile, as mentioned, and the updating our technological backbone of the library. And there's more there, but of course, um, I'd be happy to go over that more in depth. And that completes the slide, uh, the, our slides here. I want to thank you and see if you have any questions. Uh, just one quick one. On page two of the budget book, Line 1247, the shared services uh, went down significantly from 76 to 28. Is that just from moving him to OBM? They're sharing some of the cost of that, yes. Okay. And then the other thing is more for Julie. We're missing page, we're missing page five on this one as well. an outstanding job. Thank you. You're glad you're here. Thank you. Um, you're the hardest working guy I've ever seen in my life. Right? <laughs> <laughs> my whole life. <laughs> I, that's really my staff makes me look very good. Yeah, they're they're the ones who deserve all the credit. So thank you for that. You're doing a good life. job. Thank you so much. You got to give the guy what he's due. <laughs> thank you. You got something going on Saturday? Do I have something going on Saturday? Yeah, book sale. Is that yeah. Oh yes, we do. Yes. Thank you very much for the opportunity. We actually have our book sale going on. Um, from 10 to 10 to 2, and if you're a Friends member, that's a little incentive for you. We're actually having a, a book sale from 4 to 6. You get first shot at it. So uh, I believe it's uh, $10 to join the Friends. So if you guys want to join the Friends, get first crack to those books. Come on down Friday, 4 to 6. And you have uh, my favorite, Same Fest. Oh, coming yeah, up. coming up here on the 26th. Very excited. I think that's one of our premier events, one of our biggest uh, things uh, we're doing is we actually have an intercultural festival show all the diversity and all the different uh, folks who reside in Springfield. And this year our focus is on storytelling. Um, so we have a number of different folks coming, uh, telling stories from all sorts of different cultures um, here at Springfield and tabling by a number of different countries things. 
We're expecting, I think last year we had about 350 to 400 folks, and we're expecting similar numbers, if not growing as well. So it's, we're really looking forward to that to the 26th this month. Thank you. I have to echo um, Alderman Redpath's sentiments. Director, you sat in a parking lot in my ward in 100 plus degree weather. <laughs> um, and had about you know ten people come out for a neighborhood association function. So that is your level on a Sunday afternoon. So that is your level of dedication, and it is much appreciated. I'm more than happy to do that. It's my honor to serve the community of Springfield. Yeah, I'll echo that too. You must be doing something right. My four and nine year olds still like going to the library, so that's great. Really appreciate that's the it. Best, that's the best thing I could ask for. Yeah. And <laughs> I, one quick question on the bookmobile. Sure. With other communities that have done it, do you know what? How many visits that kind of increases for your stats? So what I, I've kind of talked to a number of them, anywhere from uh, some say about 100 to 200 per visit stop. They're usually a little bit shorter. They're like 30 to 45 minutes. Some do two to four hours, and they're looking approximately 250 to 450 visits for that time. So it really depends on the community and the length of time of stops. Great. So it's going to be like out and about like every day, it sounds like. It's going to be out and about a number of times per week, yes, okay. sir. Not great. every day, but a number of times per week. All right, great. Thanks. Yeah. You do go home at night, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, first point, uh, one of the other parts that, you get that doesn't really get a lot of recognition is your, your, you've got the janitorial staff that's there as well. You have, on most weekends, the only public bathroom that's open downtown. A number of people have, when my family's been downtown, asked if we send them to the library, and they have said consistently how clean you guys keep it how nice it is to walk in there, the appearance of it, the staff welcomes them even though they're just going in there to use the facilities. Um, obviously, I just want to make sure that, you know, it is almost the only public restroom available for the, for the people who are walking around downtown on the weekend. And secondly, I need to go to the mayor. The only complaint that I've had from any of my constituents about the library is the parking, and I still think that we need to take a look at Capitol Street People are parking there anyway. We may as well put the meters back up. I'll second that. And for um, Sail Away or the new restaurant uh, in Herman's Ward. I think Actually, all the way down uh, Capitol. I won't help you all. Uh, Director Mahoney said that uh, they're going to do the parking, but I don't think meters are going in. I think we're going to do the, uh, they're going to control it through the uh, devices that monitor two hours or whatever and go that direction. Well, I would strongly recommend at least in the area by the library. We mm -hmm. should have one that is a, a senior citizen parking specifically, and maybe one veterans one. Because I remember now, we got a Homeland Security issue across the street, so we got to be careful on where, how right. we put parking there. Right, but next to the church, we should be okay, but not farther down. But uh, Director Mahoney will take care of those parking needs. And the one thing uh, I didn't notice in this 2020, but we are going to put the Sports Hall of Fame, Springfield Absolutely. Sports Hall of Fame. Absolutely, over at the thank library. you very much. <laughs> That won me a trivia question recently. Did it? Good job. Mm -hmm. yes. Just one question. question for. Uh, I came in third place. Mr. We Mc came in third place. Mr. McCarty. That's good. Thank you. Good. Um, how do you want us to do amendments? Do you want us to bring those as we go through this stuff or at the end? Well, it's really up to the council however you'd like to do it. When we're all said and done with the hearings, we'll ask for those to be, if they haven't already been brought to us, we'll ask for them to be sent to council coordinator and work with him on them. But it's certainly up to you. Uh, you can do it along, all along, or you can do it at the end. Thank you. Mr. Chair, can I clarify one thing real quick? Uh, something, uh, just a technical clarification uh, based on Alderman McMenamin. The blue sheets that you have at the beginning are all funds combined together. And the slide, for instance, was just fund three, uh, was the library fund. The library has an allocation out of fund 94 as well for the, for the uh, EDP stuff. And is that in there? Is that? I believe so. So yes. just a clarification, blue is all funds together. Thank you very much.